So this is kind of for the gearhead followers here on the channel. Um, so Scott, the guy that's been helping me out with the repair here and everything, he is a big time gearhead. And him and his dad have developed, I don't know if you, some of you may have noticed the shirt that he was wearing the other day. It said Efficient V Technology. It's this uh, engine that they've designed and patented. Um, and I'll have him kind of go through it here and explain it to you. But uh, I think you'll like it because it's something a little bit different and uh, just might spark some ideas in you. Or I think he's looking to get it, uh, try to get it into development for like uh, uh, pumps and motors and things like that. So, but anyways, I'll give him a second here to show it to you. It's something totally different and you might enjoy it. All right, so so this is Scott, the guy that's been helping me out here, and he's gonna talk to you real quick about what he's uh, kind of developed here. So my dad and I have a company called Efficient V. It's uh, efficient-v.com. You can see a bunch more stuff there about that, but basically we've patented an engine design and we have some 3D prints of it here, various stuff, and I will try and explain how this works and some of the benefits of it. Um, so first of all, most of you know that in a conventional engine, you've got, you know, your connecting rod wrist pin relationship. And during the combustion cycle, there's a lot of forces that are pressing the piston into the cylinder wall and sometimes causing rock of the piston, um, and wear on the skirt like this. And this design eliminates the wrist pin and this rocking force that's present there and reduces a bunch of that friction which can be responsible for at least 15 percent and probably up to 40 percent of the the piston um, or the the friction present in a conventional engine design so this is a straight line reciprocating mechanism and so if we'll we'll go ahead and rotate this model here and you can see some of the internals of it. And I'll explain how it works in a minute, some of the, the geometry relationships that are present in here. This is cut away, obviously, so you can see inside of it. And I've got some parts here, and we'll explain how you get a straight line reciprocating mechanism in any V angle. Um, so this is what the piston looks like in here. As I said, there's no wrist pin. Um, there's not really any conventional skirt like you would have in a you know conventional piston. Um, there is an elongated section down here that is lubricated. It's uh, pressure-fed oil from the block, and that pressure-fed oil lubricates this elongate journal here and also feeds the crank pin lubrication and can feed pressure fed oil up into here to squirt the underside of the piston as necessary. Um, the geometry relationships that are at play here are um, the, the angular relationship. First of all, this model here is of 120 degree V, but it can be any V angle. The crank pins are displaced about the central axis of the crankshaft by twice the cylinder V angle. The distance from the crank pin center line to, or sorry, the, the crankshaft center line to the crank pins is one quarter the stroke. The pinion gear diameter that is on the nose of the crank is equal to half the stroke. And there is a ring gear that's situated, let's see if we can get a good view of it, in the end, each end of the block whose internal ring diameter is equal to the stroke. So when we set up all those geometry relationships together, we get a straight line reciprocating mechanism. As you can see here, this elongate journal rides on a cylinder that transects the crankcase all the way through. Now the, the cylinder is obviously cylindrical down here, but down in this region it's machined away. In here you can see it's kind of it's narrowed down in this region, so it's only the width of this elongate journal in this section down here. Maybe you can see it if I rotate that. 
So you can look down in the crankcase there. Here you'll see how that looks inside there and how that's supported. It provides support for the crankshaft, um, provides lubrication, provides support for the adjacent cylinder. Um, balance is very simple in this. It, you might look at it and think it's not easily balanced. There's no balance weight shown on this crankshaft. Um, just for simplification, this is just a model, but um, you would balance this as you would conventionally in a conventional engine. And there are, in each end of the block here where we've got this, we call it the, the drive member, this is situated down in here in each end, and it's counterweighted. And that counterweight is always opposite as this is rotating, it's always opposite the reciprocating forces of each of the pistons as it goes around. Maybe we can get a sense of that as we go here. So we, so we come down to bottom dead center and the, the counterweight's up in this region here as we come around. So it's easily balanced and it's actually a little bit smaller um, we've modeled conventional engines in a computer with this, and um, as we do that exercise, everything gets just a little bit smaller, and the deck height comes down. Um, it is more efficient, more compact. Uh, we think it's useful for pumps, compressors, and engines. Um, anything with high cylinder pressures could be interesting. Um, anybody looking to reduce this kind of wear? Any questions, Scott? No. Uh, I mean, it's it's really cool. I've been looking at it, and you know, to the the motion and the everything that's going on and smaller. That's really cool. And you've got some other videos and some yeah so demonstrations please, on the website. Please check us out efficient-v.com. There's more videos there, uh, some technical ones as well. If you really want to get deep on it and uh, some presentations we did at uh, engine expo last year and um, hit us up if you think somebody's interested love to hear from you thanks <laughs> a right. lot thank you